Hello and welcome to the financial statement analysis of one of the public sector companies called PC Limited. Here we will make some observations by saying taking the financial statements of 2013-14 and our observations are limited to only the financial statements and we can get a bird's eye view by ha having a look at the balance sheet of PEC Limited. PEC Limited is a 100% Government of India public enterprise. But we can see that over a period of time from 13 to 14 the balance sheet size of the balance sheet, the assets of the balance sheet has decreased from 5000 crores to 3889 crore. And this reduction is because of the changes in the working capital that is current assets and the current liability. A company like PEC Limited, which is dominated by its trading activity, managing this business is actually managing the current assets and current liabilities. So the fall in the total assets of this company is a reflection of reduction in the current assets and the current liability. And the reduction in the current assets and current liability is also due to the changes in the trade payables and the trade receivables. So managing the financial statements of a company like PC boils down to understanding the trade payables and the trade receivable. In principle, it is not a bad decision to reduce the debtors and creditors as long as the revenue of the firms will not reduce. But we can see that in case of PC, the revenue has also come down by 17%. We will come back to the income statement a few minutes later. So, in the year 12, 13 and 14, there is a huge reduction in the debtors and huge reduction in the payables. So, did this lead to fall in the revenue? is a very important question for the management to observe. The balance sheet also shows that the business is dependent on the non-interest bearing liabilities, that is the current liabilities. So it is not using the non-current liabilities and equity because both of these sources account for less than 10% of the total assets more than 92% of the assets are financed by the current liabilities because a significant part of the assets are also current assets. And this is a typical feature of a trading company. But excess dependence on the current liability may also lead to a problem because is it possible that the company is not able to take the benefit of some bargaining possibility from the suppliers. In other words, it is necessary to examine whether the firm is losing some bargaining benefits like discounts. Will this lead to a huge loss in the profit is an important question. Now let us see the income statement. As already mentioned, in 2014, there is a reduction in 17% of the revenue over 2013. Whether this fall is due to the reduction in the quantity of the goods sold or reduction in the price, the financial statements cannot answer this question because such information is not mandatory as per the gap. But as a management, it is necessary to examine whether the fall is due to the quantity or fall is due to the price. The fall in the profit in 2014, you can see that there is a, there is a huge fall. There is a huge fall in the profit due to the bad debts and the provision for the bad debt, which the company called that as an exceptional item. So that the one is a fall in the revenue, the other is a 
huge bad debt in 2014 made the company to uh, responsible for the reduction in the PAT from 96 crore to less than 1 crore. So there is a need to examine the reasons for such huge amount of bad debts in 2014. Will this continue? This is an important question because on the, on the asset side, a significant part of the current assets is a receivable. If receivable keep on becoming bad debt, then on one hand our balance sheet will keep on eroding, on the other hand the income statement will keep on showing negative profits. Then let us see the cash flow statement. It is a matter of concern that the cash from operations has been negative throughout these years. And more important, the cash from operation, which is actually the main activity, cash generated from the main activity of the business, in this case the trading, is, has become 10 times more negative in 2014. The fall in the CFO, the cash from operation, is due to the payment to the creditors. It may be necessary to examine why were such huge payment was made during the 2014? Is this an exception or a normal business policy? So the negative CFO is one is because of the credit sales, the other is a huge payment to the payables, the creditors. So was this an exception or a normal business plan? The CFF, cash from financing, in 2014 there is a positive and here we can see the link between CFF and CFO. The huge payment of creditors, it seems, has been made by the short term loans. The CFF has become positive due to the short term loan. But this short term loans, it seems the company has used to make the payment to the creditors. Has this money been used to pay the creditors? It may be useful to see the link between the short term loans and the negative cash flow from operation. On a positive note, in future, for future, the management should link the payables with the receivables and devise and design a proper credit policy so that the CFO can be managed properly and target to make CFO a posit positive CFO in the near future. Because a consistent negative CFO is definitely a sign of bad cash management and a consistent negative CFO may lead to the bankruptcy of the firm in the near future. After seeing the income statement, cash flow and the balance sheet, let us pick up a few ratios by using the DuPont analysis where the focus is return on equity. The return on equity has actually come down from 27% to 2013 to the, in the latest year 2014, less than 1%. The fall is not directly visible in these ratios, but we can attribute the fall to the fall in the packed by sales ratio, but an indirect relationship can be seen by seeing the total assets by equity ratio. The total assets by equity has come down. In principle, it may be good, but is it possible the reduction in the assets is responsible for the reduction in the revenue, which ultimately led to the reduction in the profit? This has to be analyzed in depth. Way forward. The top management need to understand the composition of the revenues and the drivers of the revenue, because this is a trading firm. Efforts should be made to improve the debtors management because there is a high bad debts in the latest year. 
and the credit policy need to be examined thoroughly this gains importance as the cash flow operation has been negative all through the management should get into the details of credit policy align the debtors payable and the debtors and the creditors management and improve the working capital management of the company and have a target to make cfo positive in the near future but at the same time we should be aware that the financial statements are the gap number so it may be useful for the top management to get into some non gap performance indicators too one such indicator is a composite performance indicator called as reflected through the mou signed between pc and the ministry of commerce composite performance index shows the commitment to versus performance so the commitment of the management is compared with the performance and here commitment of both the agent that is the management and the owner that is the government will be reflected and the composite performance index as visible on the website of government of india is around 2 about 2 2.5 for the last two years such score puts pc as a very good performance however there is a need to there is a scope to become excellent top management should make all efforts to become one of the excellent companies as reflected by the cpi thank you very much